Okay, welcome to the Lace Range. Uh, we had a uh, special request for how to uh, zero the M84 scope on the M1D. Or, or you know, you could run them on a uh, 1903A4 also. So that <clears throat> even some of the M1 or M14s in Vietnam had the M84 on it. But uh, had a, uh, a, a viewer that wanted to see this. So that's what we're going to try to do on this one. Now this particular M1D here comes from the uh, CMP, uh, of course it's still in its original caliber, 30-06, uh, it's a paper, what's called paper gun. I do have one that is uh, what's called a lottery gun, it came with everything, but this one, uh, original scope mount, I had to find that and found the scope. I got the scope actually from uh, Greece, I believe, where it came from, but uh, I just noticed a little bit of rust on there and my maintenance is going to have to get better but <clears throat> m84 uh is a decent scope uh it's only two and a half power um so i mean you ain't gonna win the magnification contest with it but it, it gets the job done and especially for what they were expecting out of these uh grands um and i think most people that, sh that have shot the the d's and the c's uh, you, you know you're pretty solid to about 600 and after that things really get iffy with them and uh, if you got one that's not I want to say I don't want to say tuned but uh, that's had a little bit done to it because <clears throat> what uh, Rob Ski and I have talked about this and Andy Lumberg and all them these stocks you know they're 50 plus year, years old now, and like this one. Uh, no telling when this stock was used. I mean, it's a good walnut stock, good in, sh in shape, does have the correct markings on it. But it is no telling when it was made. Uh, not for sure when it was made into a D. You know, you just don't, unless you get something from where it's all paperwork and everything came with them, it's, it's hard to know when, exactly when they were done. But, <clears throat> so those stocks are shrunk. And what happens is you can't perceive it, you can't feel it, but the gun is moving every time you shoot just a slight little bit. And that means your scope's moving just a little bit. And what does that do to groups? What does that do at long range? Well, it magnifies as you continue on out there. Uh, if it moves around in uh, three inches at 100, then, you know, Three times six is 18, so therefore you're getting, you know, roughly uh, past a, a human torso by then. And that's not counting, you know, hey, what kind of groups can your ammo really deliver to you? So it doesn't take long to, to get at the max of what these would do. Good guns, though, and, and they can be, uh, with not a lot done to them, you can get them to where they shoot fairly good. Now this one, I have not done anything bedding wise with this. So we may see that, but what I'm gonna do, uh, I, I've got, uh, this is zero with my 155 grain load. I'm gonna shoot it with some uh, Creedmoor, which is Lapua Brass, Lapua Sinar Bullet 167 grain, just so we can, we can do it. Now, I already have a basic zero with a gun, and I can tell you this is, not going to be far off from where uh, from where my 155 grain hits, uh, probably within six inches. So I should be able to manage it because I'm gonna I'm gonna stay set up at 200 yards out of here. But if you were starting from scratch, putting this scope on on this gun, you got to start off at 25 yards. And remember, you're offset to the left. So it, you know, think about this. Barrels right here, sights right here. So when you shoot at 25 yards, hopefully you keep, you remember to keep your impact a little bit to the right of where your scope is. Point of aim and point of impact should be parallel to each other. And then you gotta go out and then you gotta uh, true it. And what this one has been done is true at uh, 300 and 400 yards. So you know if if you start off together eventually they're going to creep 
the point of impact is going, going to move as you go further out uh, if you don't true it. Now, if you true it, you'll be fine. And, uh, you know, the, the, the shift at 400 yards, once you've got it set there, uh, it, ain't, it ain't much difference it can do unless you get way far out there. But uh, you have to get somebody to sit down and show it on paper. But it does. It'll, it'll, it'll actually cross over at some t at some distance. And uh, where you were shooting on the right on one time, and then it'll further out, it'll go to the left. But with that, let's uh, load up, fire around, and just see where we're at. All right, I'm going to set the scopes on 200. I'm going to single load this. I do not have my sled in there. And tell you what, I'm going to shoot with a bag today just so it will eliminate my inaccuracy by what I'm doing. Okay, another thing with the M84. Man, you I've got this in all the way back so I can still use my rear sight. You gotta get up on them. And it ain't you ain't gonna be able to sit back here. You gotta get up, extend that shoulder a little bit. Okay, I'm going to aim center mass at 200 yards. Ah. Okay, that's, that's about right. It's six inches off at uh, at 200. I'm high. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and we'll have to show y'all. We'll have to walk down there and uh, show you. But yeah, I'm I am every bit of six to seven inches high. Okay, M84 is one click equals one MOA or one inch at 100. In this case, it's two inches at 200. So with that, let's say that uh, I'm six, so I need to go down three. Okay, we're gonna go down one, two, three. Now my left and right is good. So let's put in another round. Make sure you don't get the old good old grand thumb. Well, that is not good. That dropped me down. Yeah, that wasn't good at all. Okay, now let's try this last round here. Ah, there we go. Okay. I ended up coming down one click. And we'll talk about that once we get down there. So, uh, let's pack up, head down there, and uh, see what we got here. Okay, here we are at uh, 200 yards out here on the Lacey Range. Okay, first impact from the M1D right here. Came down three clicks, which theoretically 
should have took us right here, but it took us right there. So, went back up to impact right here. So, I feel pretty good about that impact. Now, do I want to base it off one, one hit? No, not really. Not really. But, what I'll do, especially since, you know, we got overcast, there's a storm coming in. We'll go ahead and stop here today. It, it's no reason to rush failure, right? So we'll come back and do this, but I am going to set the turret on there with that because my elevation is good right there. Uh, might want to go one click to the right, but once again, I'll save that and probably take it out to 300 just to confirm that. But right there, I feel pretty happy with that. That's with the 168 grain uh, or 167 grain uh, Creedmoor ammo. So we'll do go that. So we'll we'll leave here, go back up there, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. We're back at the uh, at the weapon up under the uh, pavilion here. Okay, now what I got here is a tool especially made for the M84 and. If you want to use one, it's it's pretty easy. Take a Dremel tool and notch that out of a screwdriver, and you can make it. It's got to fit just right into that. And see, even this one's a little bit too big to work, but we'll, we'll make it work. But just a tad bit too big. So okay. So right now I'm set on uh, one and a half. Or 150 yards with the thing. Now, that's that's where we shot right there. So, I need to move it to my 200 mark. So I'm gonna grab the turret just like this. Take the tool on the top, and I'll have to show you in an insert here. The uh, the screw head on top. I just loosen it. Oop! Drop the tool. You, you loosen the outer one, the big one, and then you can just lift the turn up, and then I'm going to set it on two. And then, I'm going to tighten her back down. Okay, and she is set. Uh, then, like I say, I'll come back out here and confirm it. Uh, the Creedmoor ammo, I still got one empty case out there somewhere, but uh, comes from the CMP. Hopefully you can see that right there. 30 out 6, 167 grain, Sonar bullet, um, muzzle velocity is uh, 2720, uh, drops uh, 600 yards, uh, 94 inches. So. Pretty good little round. M84 uh, pops up. Like I say, one click. And uh, this is a great example. Uh, if a scope says it's three quarter or it moves a quarter inch or eighth inch or half inch or one MOA, uh, you know, we're talking about stuff that's built back in the 50s, which, you know, you just didn't have. A, at the precise tooling that we have today and I guarantee you if you took a hundred M84 scopes and uh, done a test on all of them there'd be some deviation on what each click actually was on all of them so once again don't get tore up uh, zero it then go out to the range uh, if, you, if you can get in the 70s like it's been around here lately and this is perfect time to get your dough. Uh, 70 degree weather works works well. And of course you, you gotta figure out if it's hotter, it's gonna shoot higher. If it's colder, it's gonna shoot lower. But you can get your dough on a day like this and write it down. And it really doesn't matter what the number is right there. That's just a quick way to do it. And most of the time these match up pretty good with the uh, trajectories, but, and you got your, visor right there sunshade back here sunshade forward sunshade in the back but uh, hopefully this helps you out the other thing I want to tell you about when you first put these in uh, of course you can see the 
mount's a little different from a modern type scope mount. If you if you start with your scope uh, exactly the the reticle exactly uh, perpendicular, straight up and down like you want it, and then you tighten it, I can guarantee it's going to take it over to the right. So you got to first put your reticle in there and kick it over to the right just a little bit, and then when you tighten up the screws, it'll move it back over to the center. Just a, a quick note on this. I've done enough of them to have to put up with that all the time, but that's how it works. But once you got it in there, it generally doesn't move. So with that, thanks for coming. Glad we could help you out. And uh, get out here, go shooting, and we'll see you soon on the Lacey Branch.